let's let's take a look. Let's hear what Prager you what 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 Dennis Prager and his large dog has to um oh is it Dutch? Oh maybe I'm I don't I don't know. Um Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I did learn I did learn German at one point when I was uh younger, but it's been a bazillion years and I don't remember. Yeah, Prager has a very chubby bulldog. Um Prager is holding on to some socks. <laughs> that dog, dog does look like an egg roll. <laughs> God damn. All right, let's let's fucking uh <laughs> that lol was perfectly timed. It's egg roll. All right, this dog is going to be referred to as egg roll from now on. Oh, what a good, good puppy. I don't have any hatred for this dog. I do have a hatred for this guy though. He's pretty annoying. Yeah. Oh yeah. He. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what I've heard under the thunder. I have indeed heard that. Um, that Dennis Prager molests his dog regularly. Um, from what I've heard. Yeah. Um, you know, I've just heard it on the grapevine. Some people have said that it looks like Dennis Prager probably molests his. Yeah, that's that's the poop sock. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Let's hear what let's hear what Dennis Prager has to say about uh about uh racism. Everybody, I'm Dennis Prager. This is the Fireside Chat. I have both dogs with Hello everybody. Me tonight. Where's the other dog? This afternoon or this morning because every time zone in the world watches this, so it Dennis, do you know what do you know where you are right now? Do you do you know where you are? It's a little silly for me to refer to the time. Be that as it may, <gasps> that's of course. Is that radical reviewer? Oh, that's Hassan. Oh, is that fish? Aw, so cute. I love that emote. That emote is so cute. Holy shit, I love it. Of course, Snoopy Otto is the, the better known of the two. For whatever reason, Snoopy, I even say his name and his tail goes up and down. Are you catching that? <laughs> they don't see it? Oh, God. This is a fixed camera angle. He knows that. That is so fake. Oh, yeah. Oops. Sorry. I forgot. There we go. There we go. Ah! Why did it do that? There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gynotype. Oh, uh, yeah. Bo Jiden. Yeah, Joe Biden probably doesn't know where he is either. But I mean, hey, yeah, they should, maybe you should take that test. Uh, man, woman, person, camera, TV. Snoopy is a basset hound and Otto is an English bulldog. Anyway, before I begin, I want to remind you that this is a completely spontaneous time. Uh, every fireside chat, there are no notes. There is no, um, what do you call it uh, when you read off the, uh, the teleprompter? There's no teleprompter, nothing. You could tell just by that that there's no teleprompter. If I had to think of the word teleprompter, it's a good sign. But it is a... Devoid of charisma chance for me to talk to you from my heart and my mind and i do that uh, each week i want to tell you that we have something new for you to know about it's at prageru.com yeah we don't need to listen to this now you will get the counter shell hey everybody this channel is supported by viewers like you yeah that's right you so if you want to dono bit uh, fucking subscribe, share this channel. Any of those things will help me out. You will help me grow and help me become a sustainable channel. It's super cool. Uh, I have a lot of hopes for this channel. I've been doing a whole bunch of streaming lately, putting on some great fucking shows. So if you've got any of that, oh, five dollars a month. Hey, Bad Bunny is a great place for you to put five dollars. Thank you for the subscription. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for the paid forward gifted subscription. China, thank you so much. And that was given to no, no comment chick. Yay. Enjoy your sub. Yay. Thank you for the follow. There we go. All right. He's done with his shill. 
I'm done with my counter shill. Again, all support is helpful. Donos, um, this actual, uh, right next to me, um, over there, right there, is my new stream goal. I have to update it a little bit. We're actually closer than you'd think. Um, but uh, Streamlabs donos will go directly to uh, helping me um, build a new CPU and I'm uh, or to buying a new CPU so that I can actually edit things. Um, I'm hoping to edit uh, my videos much more regularly as it stands right now. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for the paid forward gifted sub. Thank you so much. That was from ACAB Brick. Thank you so much. And originally, it was gifted by Nick3099. How wonderful. Hey, Decoy Octopus. I know that name. Um, yeah, I'm going to be hopefully buying a new CPU once I raise enough. Um, I got to mark down those two subs so that I can add them. And 1,500 bits. I've been keeping track. I will update this just so that we can see how close we are to me being able to get a CPU. The Streamlabs ones will automatically update it. But any other type of contribution won't, and I'll add that in manually. Thank you so much. Um, deeply appreciate it. Um, don't waste your money on me, please. I don't know what that means, my friend. I don't know what that means. Don't be harsh to yourself. All right, let's listen to what Dennis Prager's got to say now. Thank you all for the donos. Thank you, Wendell B. All right, oh, we got a hype train. What the fuck? We got the scam train. Um, this is the second time I think I've ever gotten a scam train. So if any of you want to try and level it up, please go for it. Wendell B, I think you have triggered the scam train both times. I might be wrong, but thank you so much. Anybody, I'm not going to overdo the scam train, but you see it up there. If you want to contribute, you can help the channel. And I think you did. I think you started the first and second scam trains. Um, but yeah, if you want to contribute, you can level it up and get some questionable emotes. Other than that, it's just fun to see the bar go up and see what we can achieve together as a community towards benefiting my channel. Honestly, only give if you can. Um, I am viewer supported in a whole, so I appreciate it. But don't know, but uh, yeah, it's a scam trade. Exactly. There we go. The credit card emoji. Oh, I love it. Amazing. Oh, were you? Wait, 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 Gina. Were you the one who started the um the first scam train as well? I don't know. I can't remember who it was. I might be misremembering it. Um, Ivan Clark. Who's uh, who's that? Who's Ivan Clark? I don't know who that is. With me. But that's that's the point is, Yay! first of all, if you do differ with me, I salute you for watching. Because Thanks. that's very important. Half of what I read, I don't agree with. All right. Bullshit. Just so you should know. Because I, I want to know what. A what Twitter hacker? Oh, think. shit. Maybe they have a good argument, or at least it'll it'll make me capable. Raise your hand if you think that Dennis Prager, the guy who praised Dave Rubin for being their gay guy, um, actually spends uh spends any time um reading the opinions of other people he's opposed to in case he's missed an argument that might make sense to him. Raise your hand if you think that's the case. Nobody. No one's got a hand raised? Damn. Damn. Not much faith in... in oh, we got... all oh, Ram Chess thinks so. Hey, that's what the... Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. We got one. Yeah, basically. I think you're probably right under the thunder. I think you're probably right about that. Of making my arguments more finely tuned. That's why I studied Russian, by the way. <laughs> wait, wait a uh, second. A I know it's hard to see. Hold on. I'm going to move the chat for just a second. Dennis reads different opinions. That's how much they want to beat you over the head. I'm glad they take their usual propaganda method. And hey, thank you so much. Thank you for the gifted. Thank you for the gifted sub, Gina. And thank you so much. Under the thunder, you now have a sub. You are you are in the sub club. And we get to mark another one onto the goal. Yeah, look at that. We're on the level two. We're on the level two hype train. Dennis reads different opinions. You heard it here, folks. Dennis reads different opinions. Height of the Cold War when I was at college and graduate school. And I studied Russian not to read Dostoevsky. I, I never 
achieved the proficiency to read a novel in Russian. But I was able to read Pravda, the Soviet communist newspaper. And that was my way of reading what the, what the opposition would write. I grew up in the Cold War, and so I read the state newspaper to understand what the opposition would write. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for the bits, irate lump. Thank you so much. Holy shit, you all are being so fucking generous. Thank you so much. And it was very helpful to me in life. Anyway, I want to throw at you a, an idea here. Why are many young people seduced by the anti-racism campaign that has taken over the country? Maybe because they're not racists, Dennis. Have you considered that? Have you considered that young, young people are enticed by anti-racism because they're not fucking racists? Have you considered that, Dennis? I don't think he has. As you know by now, I believe that not only is not is America not racist, of course there are racists. Who the country that only had that civil rights movement in the 1960s isn't racist. Just remember that. We abolished racism in the 1960s. Who live here, but that doesn't make America racist, let alone systemically racist. I think it's the biggest lie. Uh, I think the conservatives don't realize that, that like, I think they think that racist people being in the United States is somehow like a, a, a nicer argument than systemic racism. Addressing systemic racism addresses the history. It says that, hey, this is, it, it's not like, it's not impugning every individual. It's saying these are racist systems and we can deconstruct them because we can build a better future. Their argument is there are racists in the country. These people are indelible racists and there's nothing you can do about them. But don't worry, the system has no problems. It's just you that's the problem. It's their fucking individualism. And they try to sell it as the opposite. So weird. About a nation in modern times. And I, I have all sorts of proofs. I have an article on the internet. Two weeks ago, I wrote five arguments against America's racist. I have lots of proofs. See them here in my blog that I wrote. You should take a look at it. It's just no, a column. It takes I, I won't. I'm little sorry. time to read it. The, the, the most obvious argument is whenever people point to how racist the country is, overwhelmingly it's about trivia. Uncle Ben's rice is... Really? It's about trivia? You mean when they're talking about the fact that black men are two times as likely? 2.5, I think. 2.5 times as likely to be killed by police despite re representing an incredibly small percentage of the of the population by comparison to white men yeah okay that's trivial also since when was uncle wasn't uncle ben's not even like th that's a prager you thing they made that up i never heard anything about uncle ben going away the only thing i ever heard was about uh aunt jemima and that's because it was literally based off of a character from a minstrel show so they're just making things up again here we go again. Fucking Dennis Prager already making shit up. Is, is racist? They had to take Uncle Ben. This was an actual black man in the 1930s who people so admired because he was such a good entrepreneur and made good rice. It was called Uncle Ben's Rice. Is that true? Let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. I don't know. Is that true? Let's see. Are they getting rid of it? Oh no, they're getting rid of Mrs. Butterworth. I wonder why. Hmm. Oh my God, Mrs. Butterworth, not Mrs. Butterworth. Uh, let's see. Oh shit. Hey, look at that. We got these. We got some choo-choo hype ghost. Hey, that ghost's actually a good one. Hold on, let's find out. In the 1910s, German-British scientist Eric Husenlob and the British scientist and chemist Francis Heron Rogers invented a form of parboiling designed to retain more nutrients as is boring as fuck. Uh, it also made rice resistant to weevils, reduced it cooking time. 
Mars Senior move to the bus. Blah, 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 blah. Where the fuck is this? Where the fuck is the Uncle Ben guy? This is made up. He's just lying. Uncle Ben's, here we go. Since 1946, Uncle Ben's products have carried the image of an elderly African-American African -American man dressed in a bow tie, which is said to have been based on a Chicago maitre, maitre d' hotel named Frank Brown. He just, listen, hold on. Let's just go back and hear what he said. Ready? 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 Let's see. Actively lying. Ben, this was an actual black man in the 1930s who people so admired because he was such a good entrepreneur and made good rice. It was called- Wrong liar. He's a liar. Oh yeah, let me watch this clip real quick. Here, we'll take a break from yelling at Prager to watch this clip that was um, sent. Ah! <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> Too many yells. I'm an ah! <laughs> you ruined my segment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think yelling oh. randomly. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 ah! Too many points. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm not yelling anymore. It's hurting my throat. I didn't expect you all to go so fucking ham. All right, I'm gonna have to save this as a highlight. Here we go. I'll save this as a highlight. There we go. All right, it's been saved. Wait, hold on. I can't do it right now, I guess. All right. All right. Back to this. We got to We got to keep debunking. Holy shit. Zanzi, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you for that clip. I will publish it to the channel and I'm quite sure uh, many viewers will enjoy having their ears blown apart by my random screams. Literally, Dennis Prager is just making shit up on the spot. He literally lied. There is no fucking Uncle Ben. There was nobody named Uncle Ben. And the person was not fucking, was not even an entrepreneur. They were a, ma a maitre d. It's a fucking host. Not a cook. Not even a cook. So, fuck. I didn't. I didn't see that. I don't know what that is. rice. That's, why are they taking his picture off? He looks perfect. Because it's a fictional character. There was no such person as Uncle Ben. You fucking liar. You fucking aggrieved liar. I want I want Egg Roll Dog back. Perfectly wonderful. When you when that is what your battle is, Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben. Fun fact is that these things were removed by random corporate decision. Probably because those brands weren't selling as well. This has nothing... Again, I know they've been harping on this forever. I know I don't need to debunk this, but let's just remember. There was no fucking giant campaign to get rid of these. Yes, have people complained about them being, um, like, exploitative? Absolutely. I mean, again, Aunt Jemima was based off of a minstrel show character. They're the people making it an issue. It's Prager's battle. Like, that's the facts of the situation. And this is why understanding reality when confronted with liars like Prager U. Um, oh, yeah, I got to change uh, the title. Wash Uh, I'll look at that. Um, I'll, I'll give that a look later. I, uh, I'm not going to bring it up right now. We're working on this, but thank you. Washington Redskins. Do you know that two major polls, University two. of Pennsylvania, I believe, two or you, I think it was University of Pennsylvania, and, and Washington Post, that I'm certain of. The Washington Post, which has clamored for years to have the Washington football team renamed to drop Redskins, they did a, a very big poll. They were sure. Very big. The result. It was huge. It was very big. I promise. It was the biggest two polls you've ever seen. This would show that they were right. That Native Americans, American Indians thought it was racist. 
90%. This is the Washington Post poll two years ago. The Washington Post. Wait, hold on a second. Didn't he just just moments ago say it was not Washington Post? Hold on, let's see. They did a, a very big University of Pennsylvania. University. And he says he lies right here. He literally, first he says it's, for, okay, first of all, vaguely gesturing towards data. No, no actual citations, no willingness to post this actual information. And then he said, first he says it's from University of Pennsylvania, and then he says it's from the Washington Post. Does he even know, like, where the fucking Washington NFL team is? And Washington Post. Yeah, imagine thinking the name Redskins isn't racist. Like, holy shit, my dude. That I'm certain of. The Washington Post which has clamored for years to have the Washington football team renamed to drop Redskins, they did a, a very big poll. They were sure that the results would show that they were right, that Native Americans, American a Indians... A random editorializing bullshit. 90%. This is the Washington Post poll two years ago. 90% of, of Native Americans don't care. True, I read ma well. Many of them... I don't remember the percentage, thought it was an honor. There is a there is a an Indian reservation in Arizona that has a high school. I forgot the name of the high school, but there's a high school and its name is the Redskins. Remember, everybody, if one person, if one random school happens to have a uh, like that happens to be on a reservation, happens to have the name the Redskins, it must not be racist. Amazing, amazing construction of arguments from PragerU. Oh, no. Purple, purple. I literally, I don't expect any emoticum of truth to come out of PragerU. But we have to go. But this is the thing you have to do, right? You have to debunk this shit. It's, un it's unfortunate. They are the cesspool of right-wing politics because they have a uh, the competence of five drunk teens climbing up. A yeah, true, true. Um, under the thunder, I, I I told you I'd take a look at that later. Don't spam me with shit, please. I really really don't like it when you do that. On an Indian reservation, there's nothing there's nothing racist about Redskin. There's nothing racist about Uncle Ben, about Aunt Jemima. And it's okay. all of these things. I'm not I'm not mad at you. I just uh I just don't I just don't like being repeatedly spammed when I address something. It's not a big deal. Just just don't do it. Prove how little racism there is in America that you have to concentrate on such trivia. That people were impassioned about the Washington Redskins name okay. or the Cleveland Indians. I'll never forget somebody called my show because I've been talking about this for years. One of my favorite calls on my radio show, guy calls me up. Oh boy, here hey, we go, Dennis, grandpa story. Gr racist so you grandpa story. Cleveland Indians? What would you think if a team were named the Jews? I'm a Jew, so he asked me that. So I said, sir, Jews have been looking for fans for 3,000 years. That would be a great moment in Jewish history. Yeah, we're just going to let that one hang. Yay, Jews! Jews, go, Jews, go! People don't think clearly. I think it would be awesome if they were team named the Jews. <laughs> yeah, um, but keep in mind that he fucking, um, keep in mind, uh, like, obviously, that's the stupidest argument anyone's ever heard in their entire life. But also, I love how he pivoted from a derogatory term based on the, uh, on the perceived skin color of Native Americans to the literal term for people. The word Jew is not a slur. It's not a slur. That's literally what Jewish people are called Jews. They self-refer as Jews. That's totally different. You're talking about a fucking slur that's used as a team name. It's obviously inappropriate. He used to have a radio show, yeah. I don't think he does anymore. Or the Hebrews. <laughs> the Israelites. Whatever name you, you want to have. <laughs> It's it's just mind blowing that we're living through, through nonsense. He's incredibly incredibly entertained by his own joke here. So why why is this anti racism hysteria? Racism is evil. Okay, let's it's a given. 
racism is bad, except when I do it, when I like I just did. But that's not real racism. Real racism is when you do something worse than what I just did. Uh, but there isn't systemic racism in, in, in this country. True, I rate uh, lump. And when you have to go to, to Uncle Ben and, and, and the like. The smuckle? The smuckle. You know what a smuckle is? Does everyone know what a smuckle is? The smuckle is the smug chuckle. It's when you go, oh, 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 oh. That is a staple of conservative media. Every major conservative media head gives themselves smuckles. They smuckle all the fucking time. They're just like, they're like, oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> the fake laugh. It is enough to make me want to crush my head. But listen, watch. I bet he'll smuckle at least like 10 more times in this video. And, and microaggressions, <laughs> which are not racist. To say there's only one race, the human race is actually... Oh, yeah. Prager, Prager, Dennis Prager is a giant man, baby. He even looks like a giant man, baby. Anti-racist. If you think there's only one race, how could you be racist, right? By definition. So... Yep. Why are so many young people, uh, and, and not just young, but I, I want to address the young, attracted to this? The young. It is very attractive to think that you are doing I want good. to address the young. It makes you feel good. There's that, egg roll. That makes perfect sense. So when there's a cause that sounds good and anti-racism is good, <laughs> there's no way around it. So this has been the appeal of left-wing movements since communism. Hey, we're, the communists said, we're against fascism. Who's not against fascism? If you're, a I don't know, Prager you. Good question. Who isn't against fascism? Is it, is it maybe fascists? Is it fascists? Who might not be against fascism? A good person, you're against fascism. But the movement that was against fascism, theoretically, called communism, was evil. It. No, the movement against fascism was called anti-fascism. Communism is, an, is a fucking completely different thing. Yes, they were at war with fascists. And yes, that will often be the case. But come on. <laughs> the movement against fascism is called anti-fascism. Also known as Antifa. And anti-racism is good. Yeah, exactly. I written them. And anti-racism is good. No way around it. I look for days and just can't get around it. Maybe I'll try tunneling under it next time. They were enemies in the war. Fucking... Hitler invaded Russia. Obviously, they're going to be against each other. But, like, communism was a response to capitalism, not fascism. Oh, my God. It slaughtered way more people than fascism. You don't learn about that stuff. About you don't learn about the black book of communism, 10 gajillion bajillion dead in Russia. Uh, no. and, and actually, yes, you literally do. It's literally... Anti-communist rhetoric is completely, it permeates American textbooks. Are you fucking kidding me? The Red Scare is, is literally one of, the, one of the most pivotal moments in our fucking history. Cold War Red Scare propaganda persists to this day. There's literally a fucking monument built to the Black Book of Communism that includes... That includes Nazis that died in the war as victims of communism. Yeah, okay, come on, my dude. And about Stalin and about Pol Pot. You don't learn about that stuff, unfortunately. You never learn about Pol Pot or Stalin in school. Just remember, those names, nobody knows them. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like fucking Voldemort. He who shall not be named. That sort of thing, you, you don't get to say, you can't. Nobody knows who Stalin is. He's been erased from history. In schools. We have a very important video up at PragerU. Why don't people hate communism as much as Nazism? It's it's worth the... Hmm. I wonder. I wonder why people don't, th don't hate communism as much as they hate Nazism. Hmm. 
Pol Pot was a literal CIA asset. Yeah, I feel like I recall that. I don't I don't actually like I'm not like super knowledgeable on Pol Pot. Uh, but I, the only things I've ever learned about Pol Pot was that he was a bad dictator. Uh, it was enough, enough. I, w I had enough American schooling to know that Pol Pot equals bad guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, didn't, didn't fucking, um, we can just, we could do a stream on that someday. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Devoting five minutes to watching that. So people are seduced because there's something inherently wonderful about yeah oh, oh yeah yeah that's the other thing fucking people don't hate communism except for fucking conservatives who will never stop talking about communism but they hate nazism well as it turns out there was this thing about nazism there was this uh there was this thing intrinsic to the nazi ideology about purging lesser races Weird how that might make your ideology really unpopular worldwide. Hmm. Hmm. Big thinks. Almost like communism is a really broad idea that has many different schools of thought, many different countries that have pursued it, and Nazism is a very specific school of thought that had one group that ended up killing six million Jews. Yeah, as it turns out, people might feel a lot worse very rationally about nazism than they do about communism being anti-racist but the movement itself is is a terrible movement and it is the anti you heard it here folks the anti-racist movement is a terrible movement that's a pretty broad statement to make you just said that anti-racism is good does that mean you're a part of the anti-racist movement and therefore you are also bad? It is undoing the greatest country ever made. And I don't say it because I'm American. Oh, shit. For real? Anti-racism is seductive to, to children who are undoing the entirety of the United States? Hell yeah, baby. Let's get some more anti-racists in here. There's proof. This is the country most people in the world There's want proof. to more than any other. Poll after poll. And by the way, I want to remind you, I have told you over and over, two million black Africans have moved to the United States in the last 20 years. I kept saying 50 years. It's 20 years. Okay. Two million black Africans. Wow. But I didn't okay. know this until I looked it up. Another million blacks have moved to the U.S. from the Caribbean. Why would these people move to a systemically racist country? This is a dumb argument, even for, for Dennis Prager. Why would people move to a systemically racist country that also just so happens to be the most wealthy nation on the planet and regularly chokes off the economic uh, the economic um, growth of other nations? Hmm. I wonder why they would be forced to move to a systemically racist country that dominates the world economy and regularly crushes other nations. Yeah, true, Under the Thunder. Are any Jews moving to Iran? Oh, shit there. Holy shit. Did you see his face? Damn. He had a little bit of a... He had a racist moment there. Damn. Did you see that hatred come out? Watch until his... I looked it up. Another million blacks have moved to the U.S. from the Caribbean. Watch his Why face. these people move to a systemically racist country? Are any Jews moving to Iran? I mean, think about the absurdity. Uh-oh. He's starting to get mad. He's getting what, angry. Are they all stupid? Uh-oh. You're moving uh -oh. to America? That's a systemically racist place. Did you see Uncle Ben? <laughs> There's right? a smuckle. And this is, this is, and they do well. They, they do very well when they move here. Nigerians do better than whites. Statistically, on, on terms of ink. Oh, it's this talking point again. Uh, yes. Yes. Do you want to know why that is? Do you want to know why that number exists? The reason why they and right wingers will bring this up all the time. It's because our immigration system selects for high income Nigerians. Our in our immigration system is slanted towards wealthy individuals, members of wealthy families who come here with their wealth and then succeed here. Because as it turns out, being wealthy has a pretty major positive effect on you in the United States. 
So if you ever hear people talking about, oh, Nigerians do better than white people, whatever that means, that's fucking, that's a fucking weird framing to begin with. But if you're wondering where that talking point comes from, it's because our immigration system is slanted towards really high income individuals, highly educated. If you are highly educated, you have a um, family, independent family wealth and, um, and you're in a professional, like you have a professional career in another country already, you will be more likely to be able to immigrate here. Like that is well known. That's why. That's why when people say, oh, Nigerians do really well here. It's because rich, well-off Nigerians from Nigeria come here and have the wealth necessary to also do well here. You just, they just move. Yeah, exactly. Gina Ragnos. They just fucking shift shit around. They smear it around and vague and hope to vaguely gesture at some kind of, um, at some kind of argument, but they never can actually put one together. Income Nigerians. That's a West African country, major country in Thanks. West Africa do better Thanks, in Dennis. the, the, the U S than whites do. Japanese Americans were in internment camps under Franklin Roosevelt, a Democrat, I might add, and they do better than whites. If you work hard, this is called a microaggression. If you work hard, don't have children before you get married, you will succeed. Why is that racist? It's like saying two and two is four. <laughs> Remember, guys, if you have intergenerational wealth, you're already a professional and you were educated in your home, home country and you come here, you will succeed. Wow. Imagine how that works. Or is racist, which, by the way, eventually will be said. So I, I the appeal. Oh, I'm, I'm fighting a good cause. You're fighting against America. You're not fighting racism. Mm -hmm. How can you make that make any sense? You're fighting America by saying you're anti-racist. Keep in mind, keep in mind, he hasn't posited anything about what anti-racists do or say at this point. He's just vaguely gestured. Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, anti-America. That is, there you go. There's a fucking Prager you. I know it is really on the nose. By the way, just so you know, um, it is for anybody who's watching right now and doesn't know this. If you hear somebody say anti anti uh, anti racist is just code for anti white, that is like an age old white nationalist dog whistle. Their anti racism is just code for anti America literally doing the white nationalist dog whistle and just changing a few words around. That's just, just so you know, it is a long standing white nationalist dog whistle. You're fighting America and America is a good place. It's not a perfect place. It's composed of America. Good uncle Ben, anti-racism, anti-America of humans. And every human is flawed but it's really done a lot of good. How's our man? Good. He is really relaxed. Nathan, can you hear him? So, somewhat. Otto, what are, you, what are you dreaming about? Sometimes he does dream and he, and he, go, and he really, he gets very animated and he sort of talks. And sure I thing, wonder, you can have it if dreaming? you want. Did he like see a beautiful female bulldog? I have no idea. Is he thinking about a bone? <laughs> what? What is? What is fun? That was that funny. Does he think that's funny? Ah! I'm trying not to yell as much. Dogs think about. Thank when you, they have Happy thoughts. So, uh, it's it's all very appealing, but you. Okay, so he's moved on to the next point now. You know, in a good country, the thing that you could do that's best. This is the best thing most people in the country could do. What? <laughs> what the cheat? What America was founded. What does that mean? To teach people to do. America was founded to teach people to do something? Is that is that even re remotely accurate? I thought America was founded to declare like to declare independence from Britain so they could stop being taxed unfairly. Um, but I guess apparently it was a, um, oh, for egg rolls. Oh, I'm so stupid. I get it now. <laughs> First, you take care of yourself. 
Second, you take care of your family. And third, you take care of your community. Ah, I see. America was founded on the idea of teaching people that you take care of yourself, your family, and your community. I remember that. Do you guys remember when Benjamin Franklin was like, and now we are going to write the Declaration of Independence. First, one, take care of yourself. Two, take care of your family. Three, take care of your community. Four, get the fuck out of here, Britain. Yeah, apparently. Apparently under the thunder. It, but that's not as exciting as demonstrating against the police. It's You're right, it isn't. as exciting as tearing down statues. It's not as historically accurate either. But good is not exciting. America, America was founded to teach Nathan, clean your room. Nathan, can you hear Otto? Is he snoring? <laughs> is he dreaming of a dog bone? <laughs> exciting. Good is fulfilling, but it's not as exciting as bad stuff. It's one of the appeal. Good stuff is not as appealing as bad stuff. Feels of bad. There's a lot more adrenaline, and adrenaline feels good. Adrenaline exists far more in doing bad than in doing good. What I just said doesn't say. What? I I'm sorry. What? L can we just replay that real quick? I I need to hear that again. Not exciting. Good is fulfilling. Good is but it's fulfilling. it's not as exciting as bad stuff. But it's not as ex exciting as bad stuff, okay? It's one of the appeals of bad. There's a lot more adrenaline. One of the appeals of bad. One of the appeals of bad is that there's a lot more adrenaline. Remember, guys, there is not as much... There is evil, and doing evil is really exciting, and you get the adrenaline when you do the evil, but when you do the good, you don't get the adrenaline, and you only get the satisfaction. And what you want is you want to make sure you get the satisfaction, but you don't get the adrenaline from when you do bad. Bad thing give adrenaline. Adrenaline good. Adrenaline feel good. Yeah, these are. this is like worse than weed. This is like quaalude thoughts. This is like deeply sedated. Uh, he's starting to fall asleep, and he's just like, um, yeah, bad gives you adrenaline, like when my adrenal glands used to fun function. Uh-oh. We got a Prager U head in here. We got a P head in here. <laughs> Do we got a P head in here? Oh, okay, so you, you, you're going to give him the adrenaline he needs. I see. And adrenaline feels good. Adrenaline exists far more in doing bad than in doing good. Adrenaline exists far more in... Oh, my God. Okay, I mean, I just I just want everyone to remember this quote. Holy shit. What I just said doesn't sound exciting. I'm going to take care of myself, my family, and my community. But it's very fulfilling, and it accomplishes a lot. You want to do good? Get married and raise good people. There's nothing better most humans can do on this earth than raise good children to be good adults. That's the He best almost fell thing asleep in the middle of his own do. line. The best thing we can do is get no adrenaline by raising good kids to be good adults. Amazing. Okay. Let's go to your video question and then other questions that you send. And now the video question of the week. Hi, my name is Prudence Cox. I'm 18 and I am a Prager Force member from... Prudence Cox? Prudence Cox? Co okay, come on. Prudence Cox? Is this what happens? Is this the sort of name <laughs> that comes out of like when you're really, really like you're you, you've had you've only had sex, uh, like you have sex for the first time, and then it's like been six months, and you find out your wife is pregnant, and you're like, oh shit, it's gonna be six more months until I can have sex again because she won't have sex while she's pregnant because that's degenerate and bad, and the sperm, the demon sperm will get on top of the baby, and so instead, I'm just gonna come up with a really horny name for my child. I'm gonna name my child Prudence Cox. 
Come on now. Frederick, Maryland. A lot of kids my age do not care about politics or what's going on in the world. What are some tips of getting them to realize the importance of being aware and involved? That is one tough question. I'm torn, Prudence, believe it or not. I think that uh oh, he's 18, stumbling. Just to use your age. True, I write. The ideal is, is to learn about life, learn wisdom, and learn how to be a good a human being. Sick advice, Grandpa. Learn wisdom. Learn about being a good human being and learn about life. I think the question was, how do you get your peers aware and involved? To learn to fight the, the worst parts of yourself. Everybody has to do that. I'm not a big fan, generally speaking, of activism at, at a very young age. Uh, I, I want you to be active in your in your community and in uh -oh, your he's stumbling school and to do good things but this notion that you have to be part of some gigantic cause i mean if there is some tremendous evil yes you're right but america doesn't have a tremendous you he literally just said didn't he just like five seconds ago say that anti-racism was destroying america this is literally we're watching in live action this guy go through the fucking steps of the of fucking fascism the enemy that's simultaneously completely weak and also overwhelming and all threatening oh uh, anti-racism is destroying america uncle ben um and then 10 seconds later, oh, there's nothing threatening America. You don't need to be active. Be active in your community and learn wisdom and learn life. It's evil to, to battle. It's a good country. However, I can give you better advice. Ready? You want to know better advice about how to be active in your community? Fucking go out. First of all, go on when you're online right now. We're, we can't go fucking outside because we're in the middle of a goddamn fucking pandemic. When you're online, talk to people, be safe, but actually connect with people, learn where they hang out and where and where they live. If you have people near you, talk to them. Talk to them about things that are around you. You will build familiarity with that person. And then when the goddamn quarantine ends, you might be able to go get coffee with them at a place that's near you. Or you might be able to go out to a park that's near you and make a friend. There you go. I just gave you a hundred times better advice. The irony is... Oh, yeah, and do lots of bad because you will get lots of adrenaline. Because there is this anti-American force of he the He just left. said there's no... There, there's no... He just said there's no threat, and now he's saying there is. Not of liberals, but of the left. I, I guess I do want you to get involved. That's why we have Prager Force. Uh-oh. Force. <laughs> He's literally losing it. I don't want you to get involved, but then we have Prager Force, which is a thing that gets kids involved, and there's no big threat, but at the same time, there's a huge threat that's going to undo America. Oh, it, it's fine, Under the Thunder. I, I just don't really like uh, re responding to that sort of, like, that sort of stuff is just, like, I don't, not my wheelhouse. So don't worry about it. Just don't overstress it. And how do you convince one of your peers tell them just i guess first you have to make the case that you know we're very lucky to, to be american and to live in america he doesn't have an Don't answer take this for granted he doesn't have this an answer could be torn down and we the young young people will be stuck with the future with little freedom yeah, it happens so quickly, Windleby Dazzler, that this actually is a really good example. Like, I should just save this segment and play it back to people when I want to talk about what it looks like to simultaneously believe that your enemy is incredibly weak and incredibly powerful at the same time. <laughs> oh, I know, Purple Purper, I know. I... I know it's gonna be like five years, but whatever. I, I can't think about it that way. Life Gotta be helpful. A little bit. Government and a debt 
that we will make it impossible for us. You fucker. You hack. This absolute hack had to rely on debt hawking. He had to go to deficit hawking. Um, yeah, that's very intentional, irate lump. That's very intentional. He panders to evangelical Christians. That's why. He is, he's a conservative who panders to evangelical Christians. We, the young people, me, Dennis Prager. He literally had no answer. This is like a solid minute. No, this is more. This is two minutes of him waffling back and forth and finally concluding that the way to get involved is to be aware of the debt. To accu accumulate our own wealth. And I don't mean a billion dollars wealth. I mean just wealth so that you could be independent. Yeah, fucking millennials. Just go out and buy a house, five head. Just accumulate wealth, you know, five head. Your generation head. clamors for free college and free housing. and Oh, now he's shitting on young people. The whole left does. Who's going to pay for it? The rich? Yes. How much money do you think the rich have? If you took all the money from Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and the, and the other mo, m many times. Thirty billion per year is needed to end world hunger. I mean, this is random, but I mean, we've all heard this. There's literally a Twitter account that talks about. Here it is. Here's the one. Has Bezos decided to end world hunger? Jeff Bezos has a net worth worth of 189 billion dollars. I think that's increased. The IFPRI says it would cost 11 billion to end world hunger per year. So has Jeff Bezos decided to end world hunger today? Uh oh. Yeah, weird. Weird what you can do with a massive amount of wealth. Yeah, national debt is a fake crisis. Invent and watch. The moment that a Democrat's back in office, you will have you will have Republicans talking about national debt, despite the fact that Donald Trump shelled out trillions of dollars directly into the pocket of private industry. That's what makes national debt. They don't give a shit about national debt except when they can pretend to give a shit about national debt when a Democrat's in power. Times over billionaires. You, you could not pay for all that. We're talking about trillions of dollars in debt. These people don't have trillions of dollars. He's talking about debt now. He's talking he, about debt I, now. I don't know the number, but if you added up all the money in the top 100 richest people in America... Let's say you would get, I, I don't let's I don't think you would get to a trillion dollars, but let's say you did. We're twenty trillion dollars in debt. He went he pivoted in mid sentence from talking about paying for free college to rich people paying off the national debt. These are two completely different discussions. This is how deeply dishonest conservative people are. This is how deeply dishonest conservative um, talking heads are. They don't even, they will literally change topics mid-sentence to fuck with you because they like to lie, because they are lying. They want your brain to shut off. People who watch Prager, you have to turn off their brain. How will that be paid? And you want more free things? Anyway, the other thing you should do is show them PragerU videos. And I know I know that sounds oh, doesn't sound funny. All right, my dude. You don't want to know how you solve issues to get free college? You want to sub to Demon Mama. That's how you fix the world. You want any problem you can imagine, just sub to Demon Mama. You watch, you watch my channel, you will solve world hunger. You watch my channel, national debt disappeared. You want the national debt to get away? All you got to do is donate $200 trillion to, to Demon Mama. You do that, I will be able to erase the national debt. Watch. Just watch. That's all you got to do. Just watch more Demon Mama and pay and give subscriptions and donate. And I don't know what it sounds 100%. like. One hundred percent. But that's why we make them. So as to make people aware, especially of your age, and most of the people who view us are under thirty-five. Oh. 
Nobody believes that. Of what the big issues of life are. When I was, when I was your age, I thought that, first of all, I did always think I was lucky to be an American. And there was anti-Semitism in America. There always has been. But I, I would never have called America systemically anti-Semitic. I mean, in the 1930s, Harvard had a, a, a public ban on too many Jews attending Harvard. That sounds literally, definitionally, systemically racist. When one of the most one of the foremost colleges in the country, one of the most elite institutions historically of education, refuses to allow beyond a certain amount of Jewish people on campus. That is literally systemic racism. That is an example of a system of racist decisions. Holy shit. Country clubs did not allow Jews in. Uh, law firms did not allow Jews in. Dude, you're and literally... You're literally talking about systemic racism. You're just saying it's not systemic racism. Yeah, that's terrible. That's terrible, Tulips. That's fucking ridiculous. I don't know anything about their fucking policy. Harvard isn't a fucking... I don't worship Harvard. Conservatives worship the shit that... Like, like do you understand that, that Harvard is one of the Ivy Leagues? One of the proud schools of, of old America? So when he's talking about one of the proud schools of old America, which is supposed to be representative of American values, and that school is discriminating to Jewish people, it might be a pretty good idea. Um, it might be a pretty good example of the sort of ideas that have been infused into the institutions of old classic America. Um... I, yes, I, I don't entire, I don't know all the details about the Ivy Leagues. I used to research all this shit and I chose not to go, I chose not to go to an Ivy League. I chose not to apply to Ivy Leagues because none of the Ivy Leagues, despite, despite my grades being really, really good, um, none of them had a film program and I wanted to study film and I'm glad I did because I learned a lot from film, even though I didn't complete film school. <laughs> Prager Force Plus. Yeah. All right. Who lived through all of that thought he was the luckiest Jew in the world to live in the United States, and he was. You're the luckiest black if you live in the United States. You're the luckiest Jew. You're the luckiest just fill in the ethnicity. That's that's the truth. We're, we're being buried in lies. You know why? People need meaning in their lives, and this gives them meaning. Oh boy, here we go. Grandpa But when Randall. I was 18, I was saying, I, I thought, gee, what will give me meaning? I was, I had a deep belief and still do in God and in my faith, Judaism. And that gave me tremendous, um, tremendous amount of meaning. A lot of you were raised secular. And so you have to find a substitute for religion to fill the gap or the hole that's been left by the collapse of Christianity. From uh, What? Look at this. That is like, that's actually sad. He's like, I was fulfilled by Judaism, but you all need to, to, to fulfill the hole that was by the collapse of, of Christianity. Like he's downplaying his own religion for that, for that point. Holy shit, Dennis. That is sad, my dude. Most of you. I also thought that I had to eventually get married and have a family and take care of them. That filled me with a lot of meaning. Yes, he's telling kids, you should, uh, you should, you, your, your purpose is to have a family. Does that, is that not fucking like fashy as fuck rhetoric? Yes, you, you should fill your life with the purpose of growing up and having a family. There is no other purpose to life. Education, enlightenment, artistic pursuits, personal accomplishment. No family, make a family, make a family. God damn it. Make a family like uncle Ben, make a family. I don't know. I might. I don't know. I haven't seen all that much. Um, I haven't really gotten enough time to dive into it. I might get Halo Infinity at some point. And it is. It's very meaningful to feel, in my case as a man, I need to take care of a family filled me with uh, a sense of worth. Okay. 
damn Prager, you didn't really sell that line too well. To have a family filled me with a sense of worth. Well, he did say it was unscripted. What's our timing here? Good. Abigail, a Prager Four student from Walla Walla Community College in Washington State. I just suddenly lost my father and wanted to know how we can best cope with this difficult time as a family. Well, first of all, my heart goes out to you. It's a very, very early age to lose a parent. You're just, uh, just in high school or college. You know, there's a really, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, editorialize, but there is statistically a really good chance that that, that person's parent died because of COVID-19. A thing which PragerU has directly contributed to making worse. Yikers! It's a terrible loss. The first thing is you have to grieve. You, you, you can't, there's, I'm not going to tell you anything that undoes the tragedy of your father's death it is a tragedy end of issue i i, I you know i'll never forget okay. i spoke at a dear friend's memorial service who's a christian i was the only non-christian to be speaking at the service uh oh and everybody who spoke and they uh -oh. spoke beautifully was saying that he the deceased was in a better place because of the belief in heaven, which I have too, and the afterlife. But I got up because I, I always believe in being real. And I and I looked at his widow. And uh, I said, "He, Frank, is in a better place. But you're not. If you're a believer what? and believe that your dad is." Is he proud of that line? <laughs> what? Frank is in a better place, but y'all are stuck in hell. Fuck you guys. That just leaves the funeral. He's in a better place. That's, that's, that's comforting. But the fact is that we on earth are not in a better place when we lose a loved one. We're in a worse place. So I, I, I'm not going to tell you anything. Deep thoughts from Dennis that Prager. That denies how tragic the loss is. <laughs> These dogs. However, I, I can oh, tell you no. with the same degree of, of realness oh, that I just no. spoke the last words, with which I just spoke the last <laughs> words. This is terrible. You obviously loved your dad. And I say obviously because you wouldn't have written this, I don't think, if you didn't. Over time, you will realize how lucky you were to have a dad you loved and who presumably loved. His advice was, I'm not going to deny the tragedy. So instead, I'm going to tell you that you were lucky to have him for as long as he as you did. Oh, boy. You. Yep. He's look at this. He's still talking about grieving for another three minutes. We got oh boy, here we go. So uh oh to a certain uh -oh. extent you will be able to say, I was lucky to have such a father. And it's a big tragedy that he went so early, but I'm in a better place than a lot of people whose relations with their father are terribly strained. What? Or hostile. This is so bad. Or non-existent. It's all... Per His advice... Th this person wrote in to ask advice about how to deal with grieving. And his idea was... And his, his response was... You should consider yourself lucky that your dad wasn't an asshole to you. Perspective. You were lucky to have your dad for the... Let's say you're 18... The 18 years you had him. A lot of people don't have a dad for 18 years. A lot of people have a dad. He can't empathize. He literally can't. He doesn't understand. This is the worst advice ever. 
uh, um, my family is really sad and we're grieving my father. How will we deal with my, the death of my father during these really hard times? Well, you were lucky to have him. Get over it. Who's awful for 18 years. At least your dad wasn't awful. It doesn't make it feel better, but it does put it in perspective. This is like that meme, the one from Sailor Moon, where it's like, ah, yes, my job here is complete, but you haven't done anything. You had something terrific, and that should breed gratitude. I had this wonderful dad for these this number of years, but I do believe you have to have a time of grieving. You you just you can't go back to normal immediately. Good advice, Prager. Thanks. And over time, you will carry that memory of this wonderful man. I had this uh, wonderful I dad. Was wonderful, or again, you wouldn't have asked this. And you you now have to help your mom, uh, who whose loss is True. in some ways greater than yours. It's be holy shit. Because she lost her partner. You didn't lose your partner. You lost your dad. Wait, what? How does that? What? What? I'm sorry. What? Please. This guy needs to stop. Holy shit. And the loss of a life partner is, is, I a, mean, is a terrible True loss. irate lump. So my, my heart goes out to all of you. You only lost your dad, but your mom lost her husband. Checkmate, atheists. And especially your mother on the assumption, because you wrote your family grieving, I assume they were intact. Maybe it was her other dad. Okay. You homophobic fuck. Maybe name a, a son that you will have hopefully one day after your dad. I mean, are you supposed to have a new dad? I, I mean, tulips. Like, are, are they just supposed to get, is the daughter just supposed to get a replacement dad or something? Uh-oh. Oh, I hope there's not a rattlesnake in your closet. Jesus Christ. Okay, John, 60. Lake Forest, California. Do you ever feel your passions are burdensome? In other words, do you ever think to yourself, life would be much easier if I didn't care so much about so many things? Yeah, I think about that all the time. I think about what it would be like if I didn't care about all the money I get from the Koch brothers. What it would be like if I cared about anything that I say that I care about. I wonder what my life would be like if I didn't care about lying to my audience constantly and keeping a low effort grift going for years. But I've never believed that the purpose of life was to have it easy. So it, it therefore, it doesn't. Oh yeah. True tulips. I forgot that people here expect, um, expect like a widow to just wear black and live in the top of a tower. Um, like, counting hay or something for the rest of their life once your husband dies you just go live in like a like a stone tower in the middle of the woods and like a widow's wailing widow's tower hey trekkie good to see you i'm going to be going for a little bit longer we're going to finish this prager you video and maybe talk a little bit and then probably going to go get some dinner after that we've been having a lot of fun so far play a, a, a negative role in my life that's why i gave my fireside chat on safety the purpose of life is not to be safe. The hey, there's of that life death is cult. To have it easy. The purpose of life is to lead a fulfilling life and do as much good that you can as you can. So yeah, of of course, if I didn't care, it would be easier. So well, I mean, but you could, but by that argument, it's the same thing for a dad, right? No kid expects to lose their dad when they're that young. So, I don't know. I mean, I think losing a dad is really, really hard. It's really hard. You know. What would I care about then? You know, sports and movies? I'm not knocking it. They have their role in life, sports and movies. But sports and movies are diversions. They can't be the essence of my passion. What if you're a sports player? Then what? Okay. I'm sorry Peter, to hear that, 37. 
Copenhagen, Denmark. Hi, Dennis. Hello, Peter. I have watched all, he capitalized all, your fireside chats. It gives me a certain joy to know that. You're yeah, what if you're a media? Yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you for the follow, Tulips. Really appreciate that. It's been nice having you in chat. Uh, hopefully, we'll, hopefully, now that you're following, we'll see you again, too. We have a lot of regulars here in my chat. Sitting in Copenhagen, and I'm that. sitting in California, and you watch me every week. I'm very touched by it. Of course. You Thank are the you first one here. who talked to me about marriage. That means a lot to me. Oh, boy. Wait a second. I didn't see what the, the fucking name of the segment was. Dennis's thoughts on masculinity. Pillar of masculinity right here. This right here, pillar. Absolute pillar of masculinity. Oh, oh, absolutely irate lump. This the, Dennis Prager runs a, a fake university on the internet that they can't even actually call a university because it's not. It's literally just a web channel based off of like outgrowth from his radio show. Yeah, he he's he, fuck, he it's a fucking business for him. Are you kidding me? Well, That's Gina Ragnos, right. you're about to be lectured about masculinity by this motherfucker. You know the number of men whose wives have told me or they uh -oh. have told me, you know, got to tell you, Dennis, because of you, my husband uh, married me. Doubt. I get that a lot because... Double doubt. Men know uh, I'm, a, I'm a man's man. Yep. Dennis Prager, the man's man. The totally. <laughs> Come on. This is this this strains this 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 all 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 fucking all fucking suspension of disbelief is gone now. Come on now. Come on. I am. I'm a masculine man. Me too. I'm a masculine man too, Dennis Prager. Totally. Now, for those of you... <laughs> they say I'm a, I'm a man's man, folks. <laughs> who don't give a damn about masculinity. It's not a boast, is it? <laughs> I am your fa I am your father. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I know I am. Uh, and uh, and you should know you are. Men, men should aspire to be masculine. It's a very good thing to aspire to. We are not women. Uh, women are to should aspire to femininity. Uh, uh, but of course, that's all. Oh, that's a put down. I, I don't exactly know why that's a put down. Is that a put down? It's more like a non sequitur. It's a compliment. But anyway, uh, so men listen to me. And they don't have many masculine models anymore. The, ah, yes. They, have, they, they need more masculine models like Dennis Prager. The guy who sits on his leather couch with his dog in the background and gently rubs his own leg while opining about how... Uh, the world is falling apart because Uncle Ben is gone. When I did, I had my father and my uncles and, and my teachers. These were all masculine males and, and movie figures. They're, you know, they're tearing down John Wayne because he said some awful things. John Wayne, people didn't know the awful things he said. They, you know, that's not what he was known for. Okay. He was known for being a, a powerful male. That's a very good thing for boys to have. Hey, there you go. There's that cult of patriarchy. Powerful male. You want to be a powerful male. Ignore the fact that he was a raging drunk and a racist and just focus on the fact that he was a powerful male. Anyway. Like, just like Dennis Prager. On, yes. You're happy I've talked to you about marriage because you don't hear it much. Then he f has another thing. My question is a lighter one. Who would win in an arm wrestle, you or Ben Shapiro? I don't know. 
I, I can only tell you I'm six foot four, 265 pounds, and I lift weights. So I, I Dennis Prager is six foot four. I don't buy it. I, I Sorry, I don't. I'm he, not commenting. No. Obviously, I don't know, you know, what Ben is doing physically, but I'm a big guy and a strong. He lifted a weight once. I mean, he lifts some weight. So do we all, right? <laughs> when we stand up. Strong guy. But uh, that would be very funny. I'll tell Ben that somebody in Denmark was curious about this. <laughs> Okie dokie. Evan, 35, Kirkland, Washington. Why is everybody... Why the fuck are all the Washington people writing in? Where the fuck... Uh, I gotta go fucking... I gotta go find the Prager U hive here in Washington. What the fuck? Hi there, Dennis. Yep. Longtime viewer of your fireside chats. I showed someone your Prager University video about free speech on college campuses, but they suggested that it's fine for colleges to restrict free speech as long as they're private colleges like Stanford or Harvard. What are your thoughts on, uh -oh. on this? Your friend is confusing fine with legal. <laughs> it is legal to suppress free speech in private colleges, but it isn't fine. So if I go, if I, how many, how many of you want to bet that if I go on this video and call Dennis, Fra Dennis Prager a fucking idiot moron who talks out of his ass constantly, that I will get, um, that, that I will get my, uh, my, uh, my comment deleted or hidden. Hmm. It's legal for him to hide my comment, but it's not fine. Life consists of a huge diversion between the legal and the good. There are so many terrible things you could do that are legal. All right? It, it's, it's just the way it is in life. Good Not talk. every bad thing is illegal. You could be a, a, a miserable, mean, cruel, rotten person and not violate any law. You mean like you, Dennis Prager? Colleges that suppress free speech are despicable. And you shouldn't spend despicable. 10 cents to send your child there. Because they're not being taught, they're being indoctrinated. So yeah, it's legal. But it isn't fine. How are we? 29. 29. Well, next one is from Lithuania. What do I do? Next week will be if, Lithuania. Next week we. Well, now it's time for the counter shill. While he talks about his stupid fucking dog merch, you all have been incredibly generous. And if any of you want to be more generous and have it within your ability to be more generous, shoot me a subscribe. Shoot me a gifted sub. Shoot me a prime. If we got any primers in chat, anything else? And, uh,. Any of those things, donos, bits, whatever, appreciated, not required. All my content is free for everyone, but it is supported by all my wonderful viewers. All right, that was uh, terrible. That was terrible. Let's be honest. That was a uh, miserable, horrible, pillar of masculinity, Dennis Prager, cringily like like nearly dozed his way through a bunch of shitty advice failed to offer even the lo most lowest level of empathy to someone whose father died and then proceeded to lie over and over and over again amazing it really it really does kind of blow my mind that prager you is able to continuously get away with such low fucking effort posting all of their videos are so bad. Have you seen the knitting one? Have you seen the fucking knitting one? It's so bad. The one with Caitlin Borshenko. It is so bad. Look at this shit. Wait, where is the one? The rally that... Oh my god. It's five minutes. Alright, we're gonna watch another one. We're doing another one. I'm sorry. We have to. We have to. Just watch Caught this. dead. This is so cringe. I promise you, you've seen a hundred variations of this video. Just, just, 
let's just watch it. This one's so bad. I wouldn't bad. be caught dead at a Donald Trump rally. I mean, come on. I wouldn't be caught dead at a Trump rally, but then I had a great time, and now I'm a Trump fan. I've given money to Bernie. And yet there I was, February 2020, listening to the President of the United States address a crowd of 11,000. Oh, oh yeah, before we get too far into this, Caitlin Borshenko might, or whatever her name is, might have the most annoying voice on the planet. It might be more annoying than Arch Warhammer. I don't know. Like, because Arch Warhammer is so manufactured that it's really annoying, but this doesn't sound like a manufactured voice. This sounds like a default annoying voice, which almost gives it more cred than Arch Warhammer's annoying voice. And supporters. How in the world did that happen? Well, it all started with knitting. I knit to relax, to escape the drama of real life. But like almost everything nowadays, even knitting has become political. Oh no. Only those Politics in my knitting are welcome in the online knitting forums. You think I'm kidding. I wish I were, but I'm not. The online knitting mob is real. And like The online knitting mob is a real all mobs, it's mean. That always made me uncomfortable. Duh! Did you see that? She knitted a skull! The insults and the name calling. But I despised <gasps> those knuckle dragging Republicans as much as the next knitter. So despite my discomfort. <laughs> exactly, kind of tape. Whatever you do, do not say the, in the N word profusely on knitting forums. I never gave it much thought. Truth is, I'm more interested in mastering a three needle bind off than discussing immigration policy. But the ah, knitting yes. mob wouldn't The mafia of it. knitting. It became a fixation, a daily litany of how horrible the president and his followers were. It started to bug me. All I wanted to do was knit. But then I began to wonder, could those Trump supporters, some of whom were literally my neighbors, really be as irredeemable as they said? I assumed the answer was yes, but I had to find out. And that is how I came to be at a rally for the president. I was so mad at somebody posting once on a knitting forum that Trump was an asshole that I decided to go to a Trump rally, and then I decided to get paid by PragerU to do this stupid video, which was which took almost no effort from my part and was really, really easy and only took five minutes of my life and I probably got thousands of dollars for. Then on the eve of the New Hampshire primary, my friends urged me not to go. They feared for my safety. One offered me her pepper spray for protection. I declined, but I won't pretend I wasn't nervous. I had no <laughs> And that's exactly Tiny O'Toole. And that's how I started rounding up protesters in an unmarked van. Is knitting the girly grill pill? I mean, it feels like that's what she wants it to be. I don't think it is. I really don't think knitting communities are as complicated as uh, this person makes them out to be. I ha but, you know, you know, have you ever, have you ever met that person who like is super, super obnoxious and they ruin every single place that they go into. Like they're like, like they'll go in and they cause a stink in every single place. And then they blame that place for being like the worst thing ever. So they're like, they come in and they have like, they're shit talking everybody. They're griping all the time. And then someone says, can you please go away? And they're like, huh, this place is too snooty for me. Look at those stuck up assholes. Yeah, it's that type of person. That's what I get the feel from, like, big time. Like, I get big space ruiner energy from this person. No idea what to expect. I arrived four hours early. The line outside the arena was already a mile long. No, it fucking wasn't. At first, I said... There is no fucking way that the line... Unless... Unless... In, unless they were literally the worst managed arena in the world, there is literally no way that arriving four hours early, there was a mile long line. Do you know how long a mile is? Do you know how many people it takes to make a mile long line? I said nothing to those around me. I didn't want to provoke a scene. But then as people are wont to do when stuck in a long line, we started to chat. First pleasantries and then to more serious topics. And here's what I discovered. These people were- I'm glad a guy showed up in his hiking gear. So nice. Ha! Her the Trump- the Trump people were so much nicer than those stupid knitting bitches mobs on the internet. Harassed me. No one intimidated me. No one threatened me. 
In fact, when I mentioned I was a Democrat, their response was invariably a smile and welcome. Ha ha ha, it's almost like they would do exactly that because they want to convince you that you're welcome here because they're trying to convert you to Trump. These were decent, hardworking wow. people from every walk of life. Electricians, lawyers, school teachers, small business owners, veterans. I might question- Wow, all of those? And some of the policies they supported, they were only too happy to debate me. But I couldn't question their good intentions or decency. Thanks for the Inside, follow, though, Rain. Appreciate it. The atmosphere was electric, more like a rock concert. Rock concert! Oh, yeah! Concert than a political event. People were dancing and having a fantastic time. They were actually enjoying themselves. As it happens, two days earlier, I had been in this same arena for a Democratic Party rally. The contrast was stark. Whereas the event for the president was full of optimism and enthusiasm. Yeah, it's weird. It's almost like, um, j like jingoistic, zealous, uh, rock concert mentality for political events is exactly the type of thing that people who want you to think more about the spectacle and less about the substance would do. The Democrats event was all doom and gloom. Wow. This is literally that, remember that Frager U video we watched where it was like, the Democrats are bad. Oh, the Republicans are fun and good. Yay. Remember that one? This is exactly, they literally, this is exactly what they're doing. They're literally doing the meme. The country was racked with racism, sexism, and xenophobia. At the Trump. Hmm. Weird. Almost like, uh, almost like there's a difference in priority for the people who are being fucking oppressed in this country versus the people who can ride on a on fucking jingoistic glory to the white house event the participants were bursting with national pride yay national pride hey you want to know what else was bursting with national pride you want to know something else that was bursting with national pride Hey, look who else is bursting with national pride. Ah! Look who else is bursting with national pride. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Of course the president touted his achievements, especially the economy, and attacked his opponents. But I was surprised how funny he was. Ah, Trump funny! And his energy never flagged. He seemed to be enjoying the event every bit as much as his audience. Weird. It's almost like if you have an audience that's hyping up and lavishing you with praise and you're a showman who gets off on being a showman, you're going to be like, yay! <laughs> they were so optimistic when they chanted, lock him up about their political enemy. They were so optimistic when Donald Trump said that our, chi our children are designed, are, are destined to protect the legacy of American culture and to die heroes and legends on the battlefield. I mean. Here's something else that surprised me. While the crowd had obvious affection for the country's chief executive, there was nothing slavish or mindless about it. I promise you, there was nothing slavish or mindless about the rock concert slash political rally that I went to. All of their cheering and waving of the national flag was not slavish or mindless. About it. These people were not stupid, not brainwashed, and as far as I... <laughs> they were not stupid or brainwashed. This is literally like... Like, this is like a child's video. Are you for real? I could tell. Not racist, sexist, or phobic anything. Phobic anything? Did Was this a written script? Oh my god. So, did going to a Trump rally change me? Well, my values are the same, but my perspective is different. Hmm. My values are the same, but my perspective is different. But I'm voting for Trump now, and I like Trump. Huh. Yeah. Did it change me? Well, yes, I totally sold out, and now I'm on the payroll of PragerU. I'll even say the experience made me a better person. I learned that the people who come to these rallies aren't there because they hate anybody. They're there because they love America. Somewhere between Pearl 1, Knit 2, I had lost that love. Now I have it again, and I'm grateful.
The rally also reminded me that we are a people. Yes, we have fierce disagreements on how to solve our problems, but those who differ with us are not evil. Thinking that they are- Some of them are. Are? That's the problem. I went to a Trump rally and it cured my cancer. That's what's tearing us apart. I refuse to add to the divisiveness any longer. I refuse to hate people I don't know, simply because- Except for trans people, right? Because I don't like the way they vote. I invite you to join me. Let's make America civil again. If we can do that, we'll all win. I'm Carlin Borisenko, independent vote. My values are th still the same, and that's why I believe in MAGA. I went from being a Bernie supporter to a MAGA spouting Trump head. My values are the same. What this means is that I had no values to begin with, and I'm a complete fraud. Yeah, oh yeah, Caitlin Borshenko, this person in this video. Oh, Carolyn, Carolyn Borsh Borshenko. Carolyn Borshenko is a turf, by the way. Carolyn Borshenko got did a debate with Vosh, I think. Or not a debate. Um, oh, yeah, she tried to do a debunk video on Vosh. I can't show this on here because of uh, that. But, but, uh, but yeah. Uh-oh. Whoopsie. Oops, turf. All right. All right. We've had our fun. PragerU is a big steaming pile of dog shit. And we all know this, but sometimes it's good to remind us just how steaming and just how dog shit it really is. I know, D Dinesh D'Souza is so fucking cringe. Oh, this shit makes me want to crunch my head in with an axe. Oh my god.